Let's do an example so we can understand how rectangular components of vectors work and how we can use these components to find the resultant force. Here we have three forces acting on an object. Force A is 800 newtons, force B is 424 newtons, and force C is 408 newtons. I have drawn out the coordinate system as well as the distances each vector makes from the origin. So for an example, vector A is 800 units to the right and 600 units up from the origin. And do note that nothing here is drawn to scale. We want to find the resultant force of these three forces using an analytical approach. The first thing we need to do is break these forces into their rectangular components using unit vectors i and j. If we take a look at vector force A first, we see that the rectangular components we are trying to find are simply the AX and AY vectors. These are the force components of force A. In order to find the magnitude of AX and AY, we need to know this angle here. I'll call this angle theta. Using simple trigonometry, angle theta is calculated as the tangent inverse of 600 divided by 800. Angle theta is calculated to be about 36.9 degrees. Now we can find the magnitude of the AX component by multiplying 800 newtons by cosine of 36.9 degrees. This is calculated to be 640 newtons. Next, we calculate AY to be 480 newtons by multiplying 800 newtons by the sine of 36 point nine degrees. Now we know that the magnitudes of AX and AY are 640 and 480 newtons, but we need to write vector A in rectangular component form. Since we know that vector AX is acting to the right along the positive X axis and vector AY is acting along the positive Y axis, we can write vector A is equal to 640 newton I plus 480 newton j. This simply tells us that the x component of A is acting along the positive x axis and the y component of A is acting along the positive y axis. Now let's move on to force B. We can see graphically that the components of B, Bx and By, are acting to the left and to the bottom respectively. This means that we will have, in a sense, a negative rectangular component in the x direction and a negative rectangular component in the y direction. The first thing we need to do is calculate this theta here, which is simply the tangent inverse of 900 divided by 560. This is equal to about 58.1 degrees. Next, we can calculate the components bx and by using simple trigonometry with the theta angle we just found. Bx is equal to 424 newtons times the cosine of 58.1 degrees, which is equal to 224 newtons. By is equal to 424 newtons times the sine of 58.1 degrees. This is equal to 360 newtons. Now we know that Bx is acting in the negative x direction and BY is acting in the negative Y direction. So when we write force B with its respective rectangular components, we write the force B is equal to negative 224 newtons I minus 360 newton J. Let's move on to force C. We can see graphically that the components of C, CX and CY, are acting to the right and to the bottom, respectively. This means that we will have, in a sense, a positive rectangular component in the x direction and a negative rectangular component in the y direction. The first thing we need to do is calculate this theta here, which is simply the tangent inverse of 900 divided by 480. This is equal to about 61.9 degrees. Next, we can calculate the components CX and CY using sim simple trigonometry with the theta angle we just found. 
Cx is equal to 408 newtons times the cosine of 61.9 degrees. This is equal to 192 newtons. Cy is equal to 408 newtons times the sine of 61.9 degrees. This is equal to 360 newtons. Now, we know that Cx is acting in the positive x direction, and Cy is acting in the negative y direction. So when we write 4C with its respective rectangular components, we can write that 4C is equal to 192 newtons in the i minus 360 newtons in the j. All right, so now we have successfully broken up each of the three forces into their respective rectangular components. Now, remember the goal of this was so we could use an analytical approach and find the resultant of these three forces. Well, what's neat about using unit vectors is that we can add the magnitudes of the rectangular components of all three forces, and that will give us the rectangular components of the resultant force. First, I want to say that the resultant force R is equal to the vector components Rx and Ry. We can also say that vector R is equal to Rxi plus Ryj. If I wanted to find the resultant R, I would need to add vectors A plus B plus C, which I relist here. If I wanted to find the rectangular components of Rx, I would simply add all the X components of forces A, B, and C together, since all of these components are acting along the X axis, hence the unit vector I. Rxi would be equal to Axi plus Bxi plus Cxi. This would be equal to 640 newtons plus negative 224 newtons plus 192 newtons, which equals positive 608 newtons. Ryj would be equal to Ayj plus Byj plus Cyj. This would be equal to 480 newtons plus negative 360 newtons plus negative 360 newtons which equals negative 240 newtons. Finally, I can say that the resultant vector R is equal to 608 newtons I and negative 240 newton J. This means that the resultant force R has a rectangular component of 608 newtons in the positive x direction and a rectangular component of 240 newtons in the negative y direction. Graphically, we can see that the resultant vector has components of 608 newtons along the positive x-axis and 240 newtons along the negative y-axis. If we wanted to find the magnitude of the resultant vector r, we could do so by squaring the components of r, adding them together, and then finding the square root of them. This is simply Pythagorean's theorem at work. We're just using the sides of a triangle to find the hypotenuse. We could also find the direction in which this resultant force is acting. If I drew this angle here as theta, we could calculate theta to be the tangent inverse of 240 divided by 608. We can finally write that the resultant force r is 654 newtons acting at 21.5 degrees below the horizontal.